vacation, so we're gonna go boo eat. Boo. We're so jealous of people. I'm excited to be here. You guys have seen me a couple times, and I'm excited to give you guys a message. We're in our series called Back to Basics to make your school year the best one yet. So I can't wait to give you this. But I have a question. How many of you love math? And we love math. Mm, we're not friends anymore. You can stay, but we're not friends anymore. Okay. How many of you are like, math is the worst thing on the planet? Yes. Okay. Give me addition. I could do two plus two, right? Give me subtraction. Maybe. Maybe. It might take me a couple minutes, right? It might take anybody got that? Like five minutes in your head, I would go ten, and then you minus. And then if you go to multiplication, and then you're really good at multiplication tables. Well, awesome, you guys rock. Um, if it's nine, forget it. I have no idea. I, I don't know anything about my nice multiplication. But if it's the other ones, I'm trying to figure it out as it went. Anything beyond that, guys, is a note for me. It went in the brain, out the brain, and it has left the building, and it is gone. So I'm going to tell you a story about how, when I was younger, I was in math class. So, as you, you guys haven't got there yet, okay? But you're almost there, so I'm going to give you some insight into what happens in high school. So in high school, as a freshman, if you're on the, like, regular path, you take Algebra 1, okay? Then, your sophomore year, you take Geometry, which is shapes and all the cool stuff. Then, you take Algebra 2 in your junior year, or if you're super smart, you take three calc, and then if you're like super, super smart, or you're just really good at math, you take like calculus 74, 85, 110. I don't even know what it's called. But it's way beyond anything that I had gotten to. Anything that I got to. So the story takes place when I'm a sophomore in high school. So I'm a little bit older than you guys. And as I'm a sophomore in high school, what you need to know is that I, I struggled with a learning disability. Okay? I struggled with dyslexia and I'm also diagnosed with ADHD. So I'm a little like, whoop, all the time, right? And numbers and letters and everything is a little backwards. So I was behind in school. So as a sophomore, I was actually sitting in an Algebra 1 class, okay? Algebra 1 is a class for what? Freshmen. It's freshmen. So I walk into this class all confident, right? I'm like, I got this. This is the best day ever. I'm going to start my sophomore year. I'm going to love my life. It's going to be great. I hate math, but you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it because I have to because I got past grades, right? So I sit down in the class. Now, as a person with ADHD, you want to sit in the first row. Anybody else feel this? Because class, there's like so much going on and you need to pay attention, right? Am I right? But I was also a sophomore, so I didn't want to sit in the front row because that would have been weird. So I sat in the third seat, right? Because then I'm at the front row. But then I'm, I'm close, right? I can pay attention. So I'm sitting in this row, and I'm surrounded by freshmen. I'm surrounded by underclassmen, technically. Kids younger than me. So I sit down, and the girl in front of me turns around and goes, <laughs> What are you doing here? Like, you see that look? You know that look where it's like the, I'm kind of judging you, but like, I don't know what's going on kind of look. You know what I'm talking about? Everybody give me that, you know, everybody give me that look right now. Like, what are you doing here, right? And I was like, well, you know, I'm a sophomore and I have dyslexia and I, it just vanished on my thing and I gave her my life story and I'm crying. I'm just kidding. But I tell her that I was behind a year because I didn't do really well in math, so I had to be at this point. And I needed to be in this class to pass blah 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 blah. She goes, and I look again. She goes, no, it's because you're stupid. I'm not kidding you. She said that to me. And I got up from my seat, and my mom worked at the school at the time. I walked right out the classroom door. I didn't care that the teacher was yelling at me screaming at me, I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done, I can't do this anymore. See, I was bullied all throughout middle school, and at this point, I was now in high school, and it was out of my control. Harvard 
Harvard Business released an article about criticism versus compliments. They found that in a person's mind, one critical remark is equal to 5.6 compliments. Let me break that down. That means one mean comment has the ability to undo six compliments. One mean comment you say to somebody has the ability to undo six nice things that they've already heard. We can choose to speak to burn people or we can show them love. Melissa talked from the book of Proverbs, and we're going to use that all series long. And Proverbs was actually partly written by this guy named Solomon. And Solomon became king, and here's what you need to know. Before Solomon became king, he asked God for one thing, and that was to become wise. And I think that was the wisest decision he ever could have made, right? Because he was like, I want to know what to do when I need to know what to do. So he chose to be wise, and then he writes down his wisdom for us. So we're studying that in this series. And I want to look at Proverbs 18.21. And this is what it says. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who, will, those who love it will eat its fruit. See, Solomon isn't saying that we can choose life or death. What he's saying is that we're choosing life and death with our tongue. The words that we speak can create life or they can create death. See, when we speak death, we speak into people's doubts. How bad are they? What do they look like? What are they struggling with? Right? When we speak of gossip, gossip, the opposite thing happens. We speak life into their doubts, but death into who they are, their image. And then Solomon finishes with this phrase, they will eat its fruit. Now, he doesn't literally mean eat fruit. How many of you love fruit, right? This is the only reason I'm sad summer is ending, because fruit in summer is the best, but I'm ready for fall. I'm ready for the cooler weather. Oh. Anyway, so Solomon doesn't literally mean eat fruit. Solomon means every word you speak will have consequences on your future. Whatever words come out of your mouth, you're going to have to deal with them. Here's some insight. The words you speak in middle school, which is where all of you are right now, is how people are going to remember you in high school. It's not that far off, guys. So what you say now is how people will see you later. And how you say stuff in high school is what's going to set you up for your future. I want to simplify this to one phrase. If you don't own your words, they will eventually own you. If you don't own your words, they will eventually own you. How many of you love binge watching shows? Anybody? Yeah, you sit down on a Saturday afternoon, grab a cup of coffee. Oh, none of you should be drinking coffee. Are you serious? Grab some hot chocolate, maybe your favorite soda, you grab your snacks, right? You're all loaded up, you got your blanket, right? Yes, you have nothing to do. There's no agenda. You're like, this is going to be this day ever, right? You got your sweatpants on, sweatshirt, ready to go. That's what happened to me this weekend. I was actually super excited. I had nothing to do. I was like, I'm going to put my sweatpants on. I'm going to just sit here with my coffee. I'm going to enjoy some shows. And I actually binge watched the D'Amelio show. Has anyone seen that yet? Yeah? Okay. Okay. I've been watching the Jamila show, and there's actually parts of those stories that I want you to watch tonight because I think it's so powerful because it fits into what we're talking about. Let's watch this clip.
I want you to let that cook sink in. Like, sink in. You saw those tweets. You saw those messages. Dixie was so hurt by the words spoken about her, it debilitated her. She was shut, she shut down. She couldn't do anything. She cried. There's a seven minute clip of her crying over what people were saying about her. Same thing happened to me. When the words came out of that student's mouth, tears, instant tears. I actually left that school, guys, because of what I felt in my heart. Here's the first thing I want you to write down if you haven't done anything so far. Gossip comes with a price. Gossip comes with a price. Because when you speak the words behind others' backs or even in front of their face, the words that you speak will break them. And if we're being truly honest, sometimes you don't know how those words are going to affect you or them. Nobody knew that when they were tweeting that, what was going to happen to Dixie? Can we talk about traditional gossip? It happens in school, right? And we get it on, right? Stop it. Stop the gossip. Because if you ever been on the receiving end of gossip, yes, you know what it feels like. Why are you feeding into that? You know how heartbreaking it is. Why are you doing that? No, you haven't? Well, let me tell you, you saw what Dixie felt. You know what I thought? Five years. I went through college. I went through my life telling myself I was dumb and I was worthless because somebody told me that. Five years. Your words stick to people and they break people. Now I want to talk about social media. Hmm. If you're not willing to say it to somebody's face, then why are you going to post it? And I'm serious. Why are you posting it? If you can't tell somebody, then don't write it down. Because one, people will see it. And they'll know who you are and what you stand for. And two, you don't know the other person on that end, and you don't know what they're feeling. Do you? No. Social media follows you. You guys realize that, right? It's in your pockets. See, when I was bullied, I could go to my bedroom and I could hide and I could cry, but somebody that's being bullied or gossiped about or broken down, it follows them, it sits there and it taunts them. There is no safe space with cyberbullying. You can't get away from it. And it breaks people all the time. See, your words can bring life or they can bring death. The second thing I want you to write down is your words reveal what's in your heart. Your words reveal what's in your heart. Whether you mean it or not, people will take the words you say and they'll figure out what your passion's about. Do words tear people down? The world will assume that you're passionate about being mean and cruel and heartless. Are you an encourager? Then the world will see you as somebody that builds others up, shows love, is caring, is joyful. Moreover, your words will reveal what's in your heart. And based on everything you say, the world will know what fuels you. The world will know what fuels you based on what you said. So who are your influences? Who are you listening? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Melissa actually talked about this last week. If you were there, if not, this is what she said. Who you befriend is who you become, right? So who is around you in your circles? Are they giving life or are they giving death? Are they speaking truth into people, love into people, or are they the ones gossiping? Because if that's what you want, then stay there. But if you don't want that, then get out. Because who you befriend is who you become. Also, who's your influence? Who's the popular person you're looking to? Are they speaking truth? Are the people around them speaking truth? Are 
are their friends sticking with them? Or are they the people on TikTok making fun of other people? Because do you want to be associated with that for the rest of your life? No, I don't think you do. Because your words will reveal what's in your heart, and based on everything you say, the world will know what fuels you. And what do we want them to know? Jesus. We want them to know the love of Jesus. I want to finish with this verse in Luke. It's Luke 6.45. And it says, The good person, out of the good treasures of his heart, produces good. And the evil person, out of his evil treasures, produces evil. And out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks. A good person produces good, gives good, builds others up, points others to Jesus. An evil person tears them down, bullies them, makes them feel like they're nothing, empty. So we're going to use our words for life, and then we need to remember that our words ultimately point back to Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Our words ultimately point back to Jesus. So my question is, are your words giving life? Or are your words giving death? I'm going to pray. God, we thank you so much for the wisdom of Solomon and just the truth that he can give us in Proverbs. I thank you that we can learn from our, from the Bible and just know that what we speak brings life or it brings death. God, I pray for the hearts of these students that are standing in front of me, that they will understand that their words are powerful, that words can do good, but they can also tear people down. They can break them to their core, God, and that they can see what their words can do, and they go forth this week and they understand the power of what you've given them, God. I pray that we always seek you, and pray that we always speak truth and love, and that we always show Jesus to others, God. I pray that you be with us this week, and we praise your name. Amen.